Welcome to Modifications to a Stuart Beam Engine, Part 6. Drilling and tapping the mounting holes deeper and slightly drilling out the ends of the holes to allow a tighter fitting of the countersunk bolts to stop any leaks. I also apply a sealing compound. And I almost forgot, I mess about with a displacement lubricator that just didn't look right. First of all though, I really do want to dwell on this very bad workmanship. Look at the countersunk holes, they're all over the place, some are deeper than others. Countersinking needs to be tightly controlled. If you're using a drilling machine, always use a depth stop, don't do it by eye. I'm pretty sure that this grasshopper beam engine was originally a Stuart pre-machine kit. But the owner of the engine, in common with the other engines that he had from Stuart that he'd bought as pre-machine kits, kept modifying parts of them and I don't really know why. The countersunk holes are purposely made larger, possibly because it was a bit of a tight fit to start with. The answer is not to enlarge things to such an extent that everything is a rattle fit. You can actually drill a relief hole in the threaded part, but don't do it like this. All you need to do is slightly enlarge the hole, which is the entrance to the main threaded part and a handheld Proxon motor tool is not the way to do it. This is the way to do it. I'm using a drilling machine. It's only a small Proxon drilling machine, but it's not a motor tool. This is a precision item. And what I'm doing here is drilling all of the holes deeper. And I'm using a slightly smaller twist drill as a tapping size drill than I would normally. It's a sixteenth of an inch in diameter. As the holes are already threaded most of the way down, it should be okay. And I'm not going to put enough pressure on to snap the tap off. Famous last words, I know, but that didn't happen and the job was successful. This is a very risky part of the process, threading the holes. I'm not being violent with it, I'm being very gentle and letting the tap do the cutting without putting much pressure on it. Holes that are threaded, 7BA, really are quite small. Because the hole is already partially threaded, the tap follows the original thread, so I do know it's going in straight. I'm just being very careful. This job was successful, and no taps were injured or broken in the making of this video. Even though there's a gasket fitted, I'm going to use some sealant on top of this because the gasket is slightly damaged in places. And please note this is not silicone sealant. It's actually a modern version of Boss White, which used to be very popular as a jointing compound. It's much better than silicone rubber. Now comes the interesting part. The countersunk holes are still all over the place. Some are deeper than others, but now it doesn't really matter because of its tolerance, the countersunk part of the bolt head can actually go slightly into the casting, and the threads are deeper to start with. To start the job, I tightened all of the slot-headed countersunk machine screws using a screwdriver that was maybe just a little bit too small, and I nipped every one of them up fairly tight. And to be honest, this would have been more than sufficient. But very shortly, after I cleaned away all the residue, and you'll see that in a moment, I used a larger screwdriver to get a bit more power to torque up the screws so they really are tight. In this clip, I'm scraping away the surplus sealant, first of all with the screwdriver point. Now the cylinder is clean externally, and I really do not think it's going to leak. Here's the top cylinder cover with the frame attached. The frame part supports the watts paddle of motion. This top cylinder cover was originally held to the cylinder using really long studs which looked a bit stupid, and two of the studs are far too close to the edge. When I come to refit this cover I'm going to use shorter studs, and for the two that are very close to the edge I will use some slot headed bolts. At the moment it is clean up time. I'm using Scotch Bright for this, and it's making a good job of cleaning all the parts. 
I actually bought a displacement lubricator from Stuart Models for this, and I don't like this new design, particularly the knurled bit at the bottom. That's disappeared, and it's just a knobbly bit instead. It looks like it's come from China. I bought a Stuart cast T-piece, which wasn't very accurate, and it was too long, so I shortened it. And here's the general idea. Shorten it, and screw it in place on the thread of the flange, but when I put it all together, it didn't look right. I shortened the T-piece just a little bit too much, but even if I hadn't have done, it still didn't look right in the position that it's in. Even with the shortened T-piece, it sticks out far too much. So I decided to do away with this. When I loosely fit the engine back together, you can see what I mean. It just looks to me to be utterly wrong. It's not good on this engine. So instead of using a displacement lubricator, I thought I would just use a valve. This is a PM Research valve that I machined to fit on the existing flange. It is much smaller and more in scale with the engine than the original one that was fitted. And now it is fun time, retightening the bolts that hold the cylinder cover to the bed plate. In the previous episode, I showed how difficult it was to remove them and refitting the bolts is pretty much like taking them off. The actual bolts are quite tight in the holes. Not the holes in the cylinder cover, the actual holes in the bed plate. It's a really good 2BA thread. The side that's more difficult to do is the one with the flywheel. When I turned it round to do the other side, it seemed to be much easier. In the next episode, I'll be refitting the slide valve and setting the timing. And the last job will be refitting the piston and the top part, the top cylinder cover, with its framework. But before doing that, I will need to repack the valve rod gland with some Teflon coated yarn. But before that, I need to attend to the fact that a couple of my surgical scars are starting to open up. I've been out and bought some sutures, and no, even though I was tempted, I did not use super glue. The adhesive sutures and dressings should be okay. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.